Hello again team, it's Jess or Jessica in and welcome back for another video. Today we're looking at how to start a bullet journal in the middle of the year. That is, beyond the advice of get a pen and get a book and just do it. This follows the same main steps for setting up a journal at the start of the year, so figuring out what you want to include, planning the ordering of those things, and then sorting out how you want all of those things to look in terms of layout, aesthetic, etc. But with a few additional considerations. For a lot of people in our community, our journals don't last us the full year, which means at some point we're probably going to have to set up a journal at a time that isn't aligned with all those clean slate new year feelings. Starting a bullet journal with a new year kind of makes sense, and in his introductory video, Ryder Carroll advises us to do just that, start a new journal every January 1st, but that shouldn't discourage you from starting a bullet journal at any time, and it's certainly doable. In this video I want to take you through some tips to navigate that process. We aren't so much going to be talking about supplies needed for starting a journal, but mainly things to consider and layouts that you might want to include. I do have a printable version of the list that I'm setting up here in my long-term collections journal, so make sure to jump over to my Patreon to check that out. You don't have to be a patron to get it, but that's the easiest place to list it. Some of the points I include in this video are good to consider regardless of when you're starting a journal, and some are specific to starting mid-year. Our first thing is considering what is the purpose of this journal? Is this journal for to-dos and productivity? Is it for helping you reach your goals? Is it to track your work on something specific? Is it a themed journal, like a reading journal? Is it going to be a diary type journal? Or is it a creative outlet? Taking a moment to consider this will help you make sure that the things you're putting into this journal are actually aligning to your purpose. For instance, a reading journal likely won't really need to have a period tracker in there. Similarly, if your journal is going to be a creative outlet, you want to make sure you give yourself space to use it in that way. Another point of consideration is how long is your journal going to last you? If you've already used journals of this style before, and you know they only last six months, is it really worth setting up a 12 month tracker? This is something I've previously found myself doing a lot setting up a year-long tracker in a journal that I knew was only going to last me half a year. This just results in a whole heap of only half-filled trackers, which I personally find demotivating. Having an appreciation of what the lifetime of your journal is going to be can help you plan it out accordingly. It's also good to consider what you want to keep, change, scrap, or try. If you've journaled previously, it's good to consider which of the layouts you used worked really well and you got real value out of. What were the ones that you got some value out of, but maybe could be designed in a better way? Either to make them more user-friendly, or to make them more meaningful. Thinking about any layouts that didn't really work at all, and you don't really want anymore. Or anything that you want to give a go. What I like to do in any journal I set up, is I designate a page at the back of it to write out any ideas that I have for my next journal. Having these ideas all in one place gives me a handy reference to refer to when it comes time to set up my new journal. Related to that point, beyond reflecting on journals past, it's good to pre-consider what pages you want to include in your new journal setup in general. As you can see, I've been listing down some ideas of pages that you can include in a new journal setup. These aren't necessarily must-haves, but most of them are relatively common things to see when people are setting up a new journal. Of course, there are also some ideas on this list that you don't see quite as often in our community, but people still find them enjoyable or useful to put in. While I continue writing those out, some tips for starting a journal mid-year in particular though. My recommendation is start your year at a glance or future log or any new long-term tracker from the month you're starting the journal, rather than the start of the calendar year. Don't worry, it won't look odd. Honestly, it really, really doesn't. For most people, there isn't much point writing out a bunch of mini calendars for months that have already passed. And it would often be more helpful to have the calendars laid out for future months. I typically like to have it that when I'm starting a journal mid-year, any year at a glance that I start will start in July and go through to June of the next year. It still ends up looking full, but it doesn't include months that I don't need the information for anymore. Another thing to consider is how are you going to transfer any long-term or annual trackers from your previous journal? This could involve just copying the spread over as it is, maybe having any progress from the first part of the year in a different colour if you wanted to denote that information. Or of course, you can just keep everything looking the same. You may instead want to adjust the tracker, to only be tracking the progress from here on out. For instance, if you have a tracker that records data for every day, for example a period tracker, 
you might not really need the information from previous months and would be fine just having the tracker in your new journal start from the month that your new journal begins in. You may also choose to not copy it over at all, either because you're abandoning the layout, maybe the tracker was a bit of a flop and you don't want it in your new journal, or maybe you're just planning on continuing to fill it out in your last journal. Whatever works for you is best, because this is your planning system, so take the time to figure out what will fit with the way that you like to do this. A lot of pages that people would typically set up when starting a journal with a new year don't necessarily feel quite right when you're starting mid-year. In this case, it's good either to push those feelings aside, this is your journal, if you want to set up those pages, you go for it. Or what you could do is tweak them so they seem a little bit more appropriate. For instance, rather than doing a page dedicated to New Year's resolutions, maybe you want to have a layout for 90 day goals. Rather than a word of the year page, you could do something like a word of the season, or a word of the month. Rather than things to achieve in 2021, you could have things to achieve before 2022, or before I turn insert age here. For anybody who's starting a journal in the middle of the month though, maybe that's because it's your first one, or for literally any other reason, instead of drawing out full monthly trackers, shorten them to start with when you start. If you start on the 10th of the month, make your trackers start on the 10th of the month. There's no reason you have to have a full month in there. And it also gives you an opportunity to either make some really creative trackers that don't have a full 28 to 31 days, or just to give things a go in general. It goes without saying that all of the ideas and suggestions in this video are just that. Ideas and suggestions. If you don't think they'd work for you, that is totally fine. As I said, this is your journal, you're the one who's going to be using it, and we want to make sure that you stick with it. Take the ideas that you think would work well for your journaling style, and leave the ones that won't. Question of the day for you though, what advice would you give to someone who's starting a journal mid-year? My main piece of advice would be just to start. I actually think that starting not a new year can be a really good opportunity to learn more about what works in your planning system, what doesn't, before you select spreads and layouts for the new year when the pressure feels a bit higher. Hopefully you guys found these tips helpful though. I also have a companion video to this one coming out on Thursday in which I'll be planning out my next bullet journal. So if that sounds interesting, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out. As always team, thank you for watching. If you liked today's video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Until next time, bye.